Whoa. Where did all this happen? Huh. So I got the word in that I needed a, some new shop space. I guess somebody uh, fulfilled my answer for me by building this nice uh, addition to the shop. Uh, hey guys, Patrick here of Idea Holsters. I know it's been a while since we uh, last seen each other or met or heard my voice. Um, I thought I'd just do a cool up, little update on my shop. It's not much, but um, I finally got to uh, expanding. As you can see, i got a table now. The enormous 4x4. A little overkill, but it's not going anywhere. Um, I was running out of space, and for the ones who've been watching my videos have seen, I was using um, two saw horses and a little plank of wood to have my sander, my press, and um, a little uh, grinder of the buffing wheels and stuff. Um, so that's all gone now. Uh, as you can see, I've had some. Uh, where's my computer? I uh, had outlets ran, had a quad block put in, and down here I had a, a double put below for my uh, air compressor and uh, the shop vac. So I had that done. Um, also, I acquired a few new things since last time. Um, this is the new belt sander. This is the Harbor Freight Special. It works good, way underpowered, but um, it's good for Kydex. I wouldn't recommend it for wood or anything. Uh, the old buffing wheel, got my shop light, and eventually going to have some uh, track lighting up here on these um, rafters here. We'll mount it up in here. I have three shining down. I got those in the truck. Got to get to that, putting those in. Um, so yeah, those are what I got there. Uh, back to what I got new. Uh, sisal wheel. Turn this off. I finally got a sisal wheel. So now I can blend and fuse and uh, all my edges on holsters and now uh, if you're making holsters this is a key element to have for that uh, don't expect to um, don't expect to get really far in fusing your edges and blending them without one of these because you can't really do it uh, especially putting bevels and on the edges of your holsters and stuff like that very key to have one of these um, I love it got mine from Amazon for about six bucks so and it was available for free prime shipping, so I got a little other addition to send with it. Um, so yeah, that's that there. A uh, new buffing wheel. Uh, it's a high polished cotton wheel. Uh, got this nice little compound you can get from Harbor Freight as well. Uh, it works okay. It's for plastics. Somewhere it's set on here for plastics or whatever. Right there on plastic. So it works pretty good. Um, I keep this little bag over it um, from the sander here from uh, getting shavings of kydex in here and then trying to polish edges of kydex in there and it wouldn't work too good. And I keep this cardboard up not to hide my beer bottle but just to keep the uh, because this thing has poor dust control so I like to keep my um, all my sanding bits to hit this and then fall down and I'll vacuum it up. So uh, over here to the rivet press, uh, another Harbor Freight special. Uh, we've got the um, Journeyman series from KnifeKits.com, uh, the little little die set. Um, recommended to have this uh, press or no press. You got to have this for successful uh, rivets or eyelets, if you will. Um, it's just one of those things you got to have. You know, I did it for a long time. At the beginning, using um, the hand tamp or whatever you want to call it we're taking a hammer and and uh, hand setting them and it's very inconsistent uh, it knocks the finish off the back of the rivet uh, this will do the same as well I uh, can't really see a way around it but it's not as bad it's not like it's flaking off it's just a little wear but yeah that's the rivet press this is the half ton uh, this is not the one ton this is really all I needed uh, it's mounted to the table um, as you see here, and as you see the table is getting to that, it's quite sturdy. I mean this thing is, it's not going anywhere. It's, uh, took our um, Bosch hammer drill, I drilled some holes in the 
the block wall back here and anchored it straight in. Um, ran a, a guide board down there, a two by four for a guide. The rest on that's into the wall as well. Uh, four by four, just a little overkill. And then I uh, screwed it into the existing table on the side, so that thing's not going nowhere. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with that construction. So I got a nice little working area now. Uh, so now I have a scroll saw as well. Uh, I've, I'm acquiring a lot of new equipment to cut down my time. And cutting down my time means cheaper prices. You know, cut the price down a little bit as well. As you see on my website with Generation 3 holsters that have came out, uh, prices dropped a little bit. Uh, just due to all this new stuff, my life's a little easier. And I could, I've knocked shaved off about four hours of my production with the new generation 3 style so I'm quite pleased with that so um, it's got this puppy here I haven't really got to use it yet I've been making simple cuts you know for um, belt loops and uh, uh, mag pouches and whatnot and um, as you can see right here it brings us to this the uh, main component of Kydex uh, is your heating source and this is a um, I guess you call it oyster, oyster, whatever you want to call it, um, oven. And it's a very big one, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, I've hesitated on buying one of these for a while, and I'll tell you the reasons. Uh, if you do holsters and kydex, um, here's some key points I want to keep in mind. A lot of these bigger ovens like this, from what I've seen, um, they're going to the new, um, they're trying to make it like a big oven, you know, like when you're in your house, and they're using the convection. And convection, if you have any history or skill with it or used it, well, we have a convection, full-size convection oven in our house. And, you know, I've tried cooking, uh, you know, I had a craving for some cookies one day. It was because I had the munchies or anything, I just wanted some cookies. Um, and I used the convection and followed all the instructions on the back of the you know, package for the cookies, but I used the convection setting, and the instructions that say use convection. Um, long story short, I ended up burning the cookies by using the same amount of temperature and the same amount of time. And the problem with convection is it's a um, more high heat. It's more rapid heating because you're constantly moving the heat waves. You're circulating it throughout the oven. Um, it's not just a radiant heat as a normal toaster oven would do. So that was a problem I had was trying to find an oven in this size without convection. Now let me tell you this one right here the Oster, Oyster, whatever you want to call it oven. I found this at Target and I had my eye on it for a while. I saw it drop down five dollars and then I saw it one day drop down ten dollars so right now as you see this video I'm pretty sure they still have it marked off uh, prices change throughout all targets um, it was ten dollars off of uh, fifty dollars I, I believe I forget but I ended up getting this um, toast oven for about thirty seven dollars that is a steal yes um, this does not have convection as you can see inside very spacious. I mean, you put a, um, almost a good sized sheet of uh, Kydex on here, and um, it has four heating elements: two, t two bottom, two top. And as you see, they're spaced out. They're quite spaced out from each other, so the heat is distributed uh, very evenly to the Kydex when it's in the um, pan here. Sorry for the noise. Um, brings it over here to controls. Uh, as you can see here, it goes all the way up to 450. It has a stay on feature. You just turn it to the left and it'll stay on. You don't have to hear that annoying ticking sound. You do get the nice uh, done sound though. Um, you got your several settings here on the side. A nice um, indicator light telling you it's on, whatnot. But this is the main thing that I want to recommend this toaster oven for, for making Kydex. Yes, it goes up to 450. No, you don't need 450. You need 
350. You can see, there it is right there. You need 350. And that's the key working temperature for Kydex. Anything below that, um, it's not going to be good definition. It's not going to take shape as well. Anything, anything above that, you're going to start having a lot of shrinking and um, crazy issues going on for Kydex. And I've seen it, done it. It's very frustrating. After you sit there and you've measured everything out, cut it, and you have to start all over. But the um, temperature gauge on this thing is very precise. You just turn it on at 150, and you have all these little increments. You can't really see them on camera. All these little hash marks, you see them right here, increments. And this oven will creep on each one of these increments. You turn it just a tad, you'll hear it up. Toaster oven will kick on, it'll kick off real quick, and you can work this thing all the way up to 350. I mean, you can spend about an hour heating your Kydex, and that's how um, incremental this system is on here, if that's even a word. But it's very consistent, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I know I spent a lot of time showing you this oven, but I'm saying this is your main heating source, the main component of making good Kydex holsters, sheaths, whatever it maybe you're doing it starts right here okay so invest in a good toaster oven but don't invest eighty dollars in, in a toaster oven stay away from convection that's a personal opinion of mine um, I just really think that radiant heat is the key way to heat this kydex you don't need circulate circulating um, heat waves going across your kydex and because you don't want to heat it too quick is what I'm trying to say you start heating it too quick you start getting the weird shrinking and shapes like that so there you go find us at targets oster to toaster oven um, it's no non-convection so keep your eye out on that and it looks good oh and this top up here has good passive heating to heat up your um, foam and it's very um, doesn't flex very much so yeah, this is overall good toaster oven. I built this little stand just to keep it up, so out of my way. So, um, yeah, moving from that, let's move on over here to my next little, uh, you see this is our shop. We haven't seen this before. Yes, we got yard equipment in here and whatnot. Pull stuff. Um, I put this rack on the wall. Get some stuff off the floor. It's cluttered. This is what it's supposed to be. This is, um, it's a shop storage but I'm turning it into a uh, you know full shop <laughs> but here we got the drill drill uh, drill press port cable um, this was uh, a gift kind of um, some pool salt a uh, gift from my uh, father he does a lot of fabricating as I said on my website welding and whatnot and he needs it he's been wanting one of these and I've been wanting one, so he just said, you know, we'll make a company investment. And uh, he got one right here. And he got the Mac Daddy. This thing's about $700. I priced it over at Lowe's, so. Uh, Dad, you you did good. <laughs> um, but yeah, another one of these things that's cutting down on time. you got to have something like this to drill your rivets consistently and fast. Um, it all comes down to... When you're drilling kydex, especially two pieces of material at one time, it all comes down to speed. How fast you can, rotations per minute, RPMs, you can get this bit to spin through a kydex. And you almost want it to melt the kydex or fuse it as it's going through. That's how fast you want this thing spinning. And that makes the kydex from binding and trying to creep up the um, bit itself. So, uh, the, if you have a, um, if you have a drill press. The recommended setting I use, I would I say, is the 1900 RPM setting, which is right over here. You can't really see it. Sorry about the light. Yeah, you can't see it. I'm not gonna bother. But 1900 RPMs is uh, what I use, and it works very well. Like I said, it spins it fast enough. Um, see here. That chuck is moving. So, um, I'm trying to think, I want to talk a bit more about this. Um, 
I have a little belt loop jig here I use for drilling. This isn't the one I use for pressing. I also have this nice little wood I use for it as well. I'll put my belt loops in here and that's what keeps them stable and I'll drill them. Um, you gotta, when you're drilling kydex, you gotta make sure everything's lined up correctly for rivets and whatnot. And trying to do that without that, uh, it would take a lot more time. But this thing does have laser guide on it, and it helps out tremendous. Um, cuts down again on time, saving you money, um, and me frustration as well. So yeah, that's the drill press. That's um, one of the big helping hands here in the shop production so um that's the last thing i got to show right there to the shop so let's come on over here to um what i've been working on um yes i've made a replica glock as you can see i'm um, just kidding that's my new 27 but by request from a customer um he wanted a mag pouch for a glock 19 23 what have you um for his person and he wanted to hold three mags so this is something I'm showing I don't offer these but by request if you have a request for something I'll take it in consideration if I think it can be done I'll do it and this is what I did I knew I could do this um, so I made a three um, yeah three mag carrier and that uh, turned out very nice um, Nice belt loops, nice curvature, and I don't know, I just like it. And it was strange, this actually started out as a um, fold-over, and as y'all know, I'm not a fan of fold-overs. And, as you see, I didn't like it, so I actually ended up sanding the bottom half and creating two separate pieces, and it actually worked out quite well. I uh, got the new buffed and sanded edges. And you're gonna be able to see because this thing will not focus worth a crap. But um they're there. Nice and buffed and uh polished, fused. Same thing over here with the new hardware. Stainless steel, black oxide with the rear slotted post. There we go. Right there in the back. And we got the bushings on the inside. Yeah, it's just a nice little standard um, mag carrier. And uh, it's very strange because this mag carrier, um, it wore very well with three fully round, excuse me, with three fully loaded um, 23 magazines, Glock 23 mags in here. And I had it on me and I had my shirt over it and it does not print. I can't figure out why this thing is... In weird focus mode right now. There we go. Sorry about that, guys, for the blur. But yeah, it worked out very well. And as you see, I relieved on the front the um, the mag catches with the same design I use on my Generation 3 holsters. And the reason I did this is because, one, I don't like my magazines or gun to click in and where I have to pull. Um, to get my magazine or gun out, uh, I didn't want it to be a friction fit, and which this is it's a friction fit. Yeah, I want it to hold my mags, you know, firmly. We're not going to just come bobbling out, but I want to be able to access them when I want to. And if I, you're under stress and you're under fire, you know, if you're ever in that situation, God forbid. Um, and you need this much ammo wherever you're at. Um, I would want my clips to come out. I don't want to, have to think about moving my hand over to catch my uh, my pants to hold it down and then pull up on the clip with the gun and all that stuff. I just want them to come out and work. So that's what I did here. And also that allows you to, um, you know, maybe you can stick a um, MP magazine in here, an SR9 magazine, an SR40. Um, Different magazines could fit in here because it will flex a little bit. So, uh, yep, that's my request for a customer. Um, turned out good. So, yeah, that's about the update uh, on the shop. 
Uh, ain't got much. Um, if y'all ever wondering what that thing is over here, that grinder, that's not even, that doesn't, I only use that. <laughs> that's for skates, uh, ice skate sharpener. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy with the way it turned out. And, um, it's all good right now. Just come out here, I guess I'll show y'all this while I got it out. Uh, but this is a, uh, I don't do just holsters. Um, I tinker a lot. And, um, this right here is a uh, 1977 Honda CT70. Um, my father got this when I was about three or four years old. Uh, it was in somebody's backyard. Weeds were growing through it. It was in pieces. My dad took it back. He had a little shop behind the house. He stripped it totally down. Uh, got it running. And um, that was it. Got it put back together and got it running. That was it. No, no lights. No nothing worked on it. And um, I used it like that for years, just riding it around. And um, and recently I got interested into uh, fixing it. So I started looking around for parts. And I had a dream one day, or one night. And it said, check eBay. And I woke up, went to eBay, and there was just tons of parts. And I was finally able to fix this bike and get it running because the carburetor failed on it. But, um, I know this has nothing to do with holsters, but it's just something I take pride in. I just thought I'd show it to y'all. Um, I put a whole new wiring harness in, a whole new ignition, a whole new carburetor. It's a Chinese-made one, so it pollutes like crazy. Um, this motor's never been rebuilt. It's original seals and everything. Uh, this is the original Miles. You see here. Uh, battery in it, neutral light comes on. Horn, lights, everything work on it now because of me. I finally got around to repainting the uh, headlight dome, as you can see. Uh, I do pretty good paint jobs with spray paint. It's, it's very time consuming, but um, it's about a six stage process I do on painting stuff like that. As you can see here on the uh, Speedo as well, I've repainted this, polished all this chrome up, uh, repainted. The uh, uh, ignition guard, kick plate, whatever you want to call it. I uh, stripped all the paint off of this. My painted it solid black. This is supposed to be black in here, but I took it all off. Come back here. I repainted this entire um, license plate bracket. Put a whole new seat on it. And also, as I was sanding this um, license plate bracket or brake light holder, I recovered one of the old. Um, stickers that somebody spray painted over. So using very fine sand paint, excuse me, sandpaper, I removed all the old cry um, Krylon spray paint off and retrieved it, masked it off, and then I went back to my six stage process of painting it. So yeah, I'm very happy. It's just something that's been in my family now for a while, and it's pretty old. Yeah, it's something that makes me happy, even though it's a mini bike. But uh, all right, guys, I'm out. I thought I'd show you this, and um, stay tuned for some more holsters. And sorry this video is so long and somewhat boring. Peace out.